And they say that freedom is a constant struggle. And they say that freedom is a constant struggle. And they say that freedom is a constant struggle. We've been struggling so long. We must be free, we must be free. Hi, I'm Joel Landy and this is Songs of Freedom, a show that celebrates the dignity of human struggle with its many faces and its many, many voices. Before, before we actually get started with the show tonight, I'd like to read you something. And this is something I found upstairs in the offices of the Manhattan Neighborhood Network where we create this show. It says, I am a viewer and strong supporter of public access television programs in Manhattan. I urge you to continue public access services when the cable television franchise is renewed next year. This is a postcard. And whoever signs on this and sends it in, and it goes to Walter De La Cruz, Director of Cable Television Franchises and Policy, Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications. Send one of these in but you don't have to create one yourself. The Manhattan Neighborhood Network can send these to you and you can send it in with a stamp. Um, here's what you do. You call the following phone number in New York, 212 of course, unless you live here, 260, and you don't have to live in New York to participate in this. So it's the New York area code 212, 260, extension 345, during office hours, it's 9.30 to 5.30, and you ask for Lily, Carino, Carino, I'm sorry, Lily Carino, ask for her, ask her for the uh, postcard that can help access continue here in New York City, okay? Do that. Um, I'm going to walk over here. Oh, by the way, did you notice I'm wearing a suit tonight? Usually you're used to wearing me, yeah. He finally got dressed! No, thank you, thank you. I, I do have a suit. Actually, I, this is a uniform a lot of people wear during the day when they work that job, which allows them to do things like this at night. Um, the reason I wore this suit tonight instead of changing into the t-shirt is just to show that people of all kinds of diverse clothing get involved with this. Okay, I said what I had to. Why don't you come on over here? Come on, my mom would be so proud. Eric LeVay. Hey, 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 how, how you doing, how buddy? How are you, man? Good to okay. see you. Okay, have seen Eric here before. He's a, he's a wonderful Hi. musician, folklorist, and um, Member of the War Resistance yes, League. Yes, right. Now, we were talking about this is tax season. That's right. Um, you asked me a question yeah, Joel, before. did you get your taxes in on time this year? I was thinking you might have sort of uh, dawdled on it a little bit. You well, know? I, I, I wore a suit and I paid my taxes. Well, that's great, Joel. I'm glad because I want to know whether you want to know a little bit about how your tax money is spent. I mean, you go, you pay it, but you know, do you ever think about where it goes to? Yeah, but like I'm as resigned as anybody else is well, about me, what goes on. Let me tell a little bit about Why it. Why don't from, you do that? I'm uh, going to step over here and give you plenty of space to make this point more. of view. I just want you to know that if you'd ask the government, they would say, if you'd ask them how much of your money goes to defense, they would say 15%. Actually, that's not correct. And the reason that's not correct is because they factor into this 15% money for Social Security and other trust funds. You know, Social Security is something that you pay to the government, you pay your money to the government, and then they administer it. That's like um, they administer a low-cost um, insurance program for you. It has nothing to do with the federal budget. If you don't believe me, go to any store and check it out. Half, you know, it's, it's called off and on budget. Hey, you can check it out. You're intelligent. Comparing Social Security and, uh, and, and the funds that go to the federal budget um, are like comparing apples and oranges. It's just not true. We're going to talk about where your money really goes to, but before we do, I want you to sing a little song with me. Uh, I know you're all revved up out there in studio land, and I want you to sing back to me anything that I sing out to you. I'm going to say, 
delicious tasting Pentagon pie. Delicious tasting Pentagon pie. Delicious tasting Pentagon pie. song I wrote a long time ago for demonstrations because it's easy to do. But now I'm going to tell you how your money is divided. We have here the government budget. And I'm going to ask you to come up and take your piece. Is, the human, re is human resources here? Can human resources come up to the stage? Um. Uh, well, uh, one of you's got to be uh, human resources, you know. Uh, I know it's not an easy job being a social worker and all that stuff, but this is the amount of pie that goes to human resources. I'm sorry, this pie suffered some collateral damage on the subway. Of course, this pie has to be divided up a number of ways. The War so Resisters League put this... No, that's all you can have. This has to be divided between education, health and human services, HUD, housing subsidies, food stamps, and the Labor Department. Hey, that's the, that's the breaks. Hey, is general government here someplace? Yes. General government? My name is General no, Government. No, no, no. General government is not a general. General government is a number of different departments here, and all oh, this pie is really sorry this year. Is that all I get for my money? Hey, listen, I'm sorry. You have to divide that up between Justice Department, International Affairs, the Peace Corps, interest on the national debt, and the civilian portion of NASA. But it's just a hey. couple of crumbs. Go do it! I'm the government! Now don't talk or we'll put you in a federal prison. Mm, a couple of crumbs, that's all I get. Is physical resources here anywhere? Any of you environmentalists might be interested in physical resources here. Um, physical resources here? Ah, uh, come on up, physical resources. It's good to see you! I know that you'll like the slice of pie you get. Will you show it to the camera? You know, this has to be divided up between agriculture, the Commerce Department, the Energy Department, HUD, um, Administration and Community Development of HUD, that is, the Interior Department, the Transportation Department, and the in and environmental protection. So I guess if we were to say what is the all-out environmental protection, it would be like, you know, something like this. All right, I'll go, be satisfied with what you got. Remember, the Republicans could make it a lot worse. Well. You know, now comes the interesting part. Oh, by the way, I failed to say that I want you guys to come up one more time. Um, this is a Christian country, and I want to give you some blood red wine, like we said in the song, to wash your pie down with. You know, the Pentagon, blood red wine. I could have had a V8. Yes, here you go. Uh, Do I have to drink this here, or can I take it home? Hey. When you have a budget which kills as many people around the world as ours does, you have to do it. Hey, 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 there you go. Drink it down. Now I want to tell you about the money that goes to the Defense Department here. 49% of the federal budget, I guess a little bit more, should have gone to uh, human resources and HUD and so forth. I, now that's it. 49% of the federal budget here and um, current military is 23%. Now I'm putting this on the Pentagon plate. As you see, it has five sides. And 26% goes for the past military budget. Uh, just a little bit of a breakage here, but we can get that all on the plate here. Here is the Pentagon pie. Yes, it is. Now, you know that um,
current military is uh, personnel, retired pay, operation and maintenance, family housing, procurement, research and development, construction, Department of Energy, nuclear weapons, the CIA, 50% of NASA. Ah, past military, what is that anyway? Past military is veterans benefits, which by the way, I wouldn't cut, um, but it also is the interest on the national debt. Now, hey, um, the interest on the national debt, we've, we've blown a lot of money on this Pentagon for a long time, so it just doesn't come, you know, without a little bit of interest. You gotta pay your bills first. Well, now I wanna show you where this money goes to. Isn't it great to know that we can feel secure in this country? I feel secure with all of this. And I'll tell you, we also have submarines under the water everywhere, everywhere. You know, if these submarines were to ever surface, they could definitely, definitely send their missiles. They call them MIRV and MARV. And they might, you know, blow up the whole world just on, but that's not going to happen. We all know that they're safe. Hey, that's not right. That shouldn't have happened. I got to tell these fellas that they should be more careful. Fellas, you should be more, this is all radioactive. You know, I want to ask you all, to come to the War Resisters League benefit on April the 19th. This is a disaster. Yeah. What happens if this happens to you? This radiation could uh, totally uh, ruin your life. Hey, you know, there's the address, and that tells you where the benefit is. I can't see it. Why don't you read it to us? OK, the War Resisters benefit, Saturday, April the 19th, at 133 West 4th Street. That's the People's Voice Cafe, 133 West 4th Street, at 8 PM. And you can get there at 7.30, too, if you'd like. The telephone number to call if you want more information is 718 335-3602. That's 718-335-3602. Oh, look at this. Maybe this military business is not such a good idea after all. You've been watching Songs of Freedom. My name is Joel Andy. I'm with Eric Levine and we're talking about, we're talking about the end of war. The end of the Pentagon? Eric, a day without the Pentagon? Is that really possible? I mean, are we possibly going to end this war business? Joe, we've been suffering for a long time under the yoke of wars. And I want to tell you that it's, it's just, it's just got to stop. Oh, yeah. Oh, Especially yeah. nuclear weapons. They are still a danger, you know. The sun is burning in the sky. Strands of clouds are slowly drifting by. And in the park, the dreamy bees are going in and out of the flowers within the trees. And the sun is in the sky. Now the sun is sinking low, children playing, now it's time to go. And the couples in the park are holding hands and waiting for the dawn.
has come to earth. Now the sun has come to earth. All that's left is darkness, pain, and fear. Twisted rats of women and men falling down upon their knees and crying pain. And the sun has disappeared. I just couldn't leave that song, that song, that old song that was written in the 60s, the way it was. I figured you had to add another verse to it because it was too depressing. You can't organize people around being depressed and being upset and thinking that life is going to end. You have to organize people around something to live for. And so I wrote this song for all of you guardians of history. The sun is in the sky. You who see it, do not question why. You who want an end to war, make sure the sun will char the earth no more. And the sun is still. Songs of Freedom and A Day Without the Pentagon. And now again, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Levine. You know, I want to tell you something from the bottom of my heart. I'll tell you quite honestly, this medical system we have is really awful when there's no money for what needs to be done. People die every day, and I can tell you, I'm personally involved with it. Well, I went down the street last night. I knew things weren't exactly right. Some people came up to me under the light. The next thing I knew, I'd been stabbed with a knife. Woke up in a hospital. Some neatly dressed person came up to me with a clipboard and asked me this question. Do you have Blue Cross? Do you have Blue Shield? Major medical, HMO, UFO, Rider J, deductible, I said no. But I got BLOOD running down my primary ASS to my secondary TOE. They said, sorry, we can't treat you. I said, I'm going to VOMIT on YOU. So they took me up to the OR, STAT. Well, you know, I really had a hell of a time. The surgeon cut all along the line. When he found out I was uninsured, not a moment of his time could I procure. He sent me back from the hospital the same day, I think they call it same day surgery. NG tube still in my nose, IV still in my arm, Foley catheter still in my folio. He says, here's a wire cutters and a pamphlet Take your sutures out yourself and don't shower for a month. Well, you know it deserves some recollection. I got one hell of an infection. Back to the hospital I did zoom. 2 a.m. to the emergency room. Triage nurse took me exactly where I had to go. Admission. And then a well-dressed person came up to me with a clipboard and asked me this question. Do you have Blue Cross? Do you have Blue Shield? 
Major medical HMO UFO rider J deductible I said no But I got P-U-S And a T-E-M-P of 106 My heart is going out of NSR Into PCPs and AFibs They said sorry But we don't deal with any of those companies You know, it's really a hell of a thing, this, this stupid, ridiculous medical game. Instead of taking out what's sick and bad, they suction all the money you ever had. Blue Cross Osis, major metacosis with swollen offices, obliteration of the vein of decency, hypo common sense, hyper wastefulness, but you know, this type of symptomatology is to be expected when a patient is suffering from the underlying condition known as profiteer's disease. Pentagonorrhea. So fight for national health insurance, single payer only. We didn't get it last time, but we're gonna get it this time. You'll be real glad you did. to hook these issues together. And I can't think of anybody better to help us hook these issues together, to show the, how, how everything is truly related in terms of these political issues, than a man who I have admired for a long time. His name is David McReynolds, and he's from the War Resisters League. How David, you? how are you? Good to see you. Hey, me and David have a been fighting for peace for a long time together. And David, one thing I really want to ask you, what, maybe you could give us a little perspective, because I, I think people saw with the uh, song and, and the song and dance that I did there about th that Pentagon spending is still a problem. But, but how did it, how did it where, where are we going now? How did it get and this? And why doesn't anybody care about it? That's right. That's, that's yeah. the, I guess, yeah. the biggest thing I'm thinking. I know. Uh, I had a hard time thinking about these things watching me play that guitar. I tell you, watching your hands on that guitar is wonderful. <laughs> it really is wonderful. Thank you. Um, okay. One of the problems is nobody is actually coming back home in body bags. And uh, during the Vietnam War, we had 10 years of war, 10 years of body bags, and 10 years of folks to say, well, this is a terrible, terrible thing. And 10 years of frontline television shows of, of uh, men being shot down, villages burned up. The Pentagon is taking our money, but it's burning it up in different ways. We're living in a country which now, we all know, has, has a problem of communities at war with themselves. And people are saying, why are the kids shooting each other? Why are they shooting? What's the matter with these kids? They didn't do this in my list. The reason they're shooting each other is we live in a society which has legitimized violence at the highest level. We, we are the most heavily armed country in the world. Why should we be surprised with the television shows we've got? with the government we've got, with the CIA we've got, that the kids in the ghettos are shooting each other. Those are the body bags. That's part of what's happening with the Pentagon budget. Why are we surprised at the drug addiction? There's no money for drug programs. If you're an addict, you can't get on treatment. You have to wait even for methadone treatment, which I think is crazy because personally yeah. I just as legalized the heroin prescribed right through doctors, which is another question. But right. if you want to get, if you're hooked and you want to get off, you can't. There's no treatment. They send you to jail instead. The biggest new industry in this country is the prison system. David, how do we get unhooked from the Pentagon? Ah, well, that's going to be a, a long road. It's not. We didn't. It took. It took us decades to get here. It's going to take us a while to get off. Part of it is people resisting their taxes if they can do that. Part of it is watching who you vote for. Part of it is asking questions, and part of it is demonstrating. And part of it, this October is going to be going down in community after community around the country and saying we're going to close down the Pentagon, symbolic. It's going to the agencies in our communities, the places that build weapons, uh -huh. the places that are CIA offices, that are government offices, and say we want our money used in new ways. We're going to symbolically close down the Pentagon all over the country on October 
uh, 24th, which is also UN Day. That's the beginning of trying to make this an issue people have got to pay attention to yeah. because people are going to be in the streets and being arrested for this. David, how can we get to the people who are watching TV now and saying, well, you know, this is interesting, but, but I, I, I don't want to be arrested him. yet, or I, I, they just want to sort of feel it out. And sort that's, of that's fine. They don't have to worry about it. They can write to the Warby Sisters League. I think we have a flashcard on the, on the benefit coming up, and they get information that's benefit about how to get involved at, at an entirely legal level. But th this issue, no matter He's from where you go, oh, okay, I see it. From, <laughs> no matter where you come from, this issue is an important issue. I mean, this issue affects all your issues. So um, I really urge you all to um, put that, that graphic is up there, and I think you can come to the War Resisters yeah, yeah, League yeah. benefit, and you can uh, write the War Resisters League at 339 Lafayette Street and call them at area code 212 228. Uh, finish it, 0450. I guess right. after all these years I know the number. Well, you know, right now I want to call M Joel back up here. And I call the audience I think up we, too Yeah, many there's too many of us. Too many of us out there today. I think we should end with a song. Ed McCurdy wrote this song years ago, and we've used it sort of as an anthem. Well, maybe a little corny, but we're going to dig up, you know, some of that old spirit. And here we go.